So, um, yeah, next speaker is Bas uh, Fotola, and I'm really happy that uh, he's presenting here. He's actually one of the uh, all right, uh, long time contributors, and uh, maybe some of you will remember him uh, from the first summit two years ago. We had this kind of challenge uh, to port uh, Silicon Labs even 32 uh, to Riot, and uh, Bas was actually the one who kind of won the, the challenge and uh, was responsible for the port to this platform. Um, he's now working uh, for uh, uh, Lego, which is uh, a web company and also uh, has also um, um, uh, also situated in, in Germany, um, doing uh, electrical charging. And in this talk, he's going to talk about um, home automation and uh, how he used the right uh, with KNX to um, build a, uh, a smart home in his, in his house. And then, um, as soon as we have solved the usual problems with uh, connectivity between laptops and cleaners. Okay. Right, so uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Bas Toppela and um, I will present something about uh, KNX today. Uh, well, my nickname is Basil Fix. I'm from Arnhem, which is here in the Netherlands. I uh, graduated in 2015 and I'm currently work for Lego, which is in the charge point operator in the e-mobility field. And uh, I also did a lot of things on the EFM32 board. And uh, the Thread3, the IKEA Thread3 is uh, one of the boards supported uh, since last year, which I worked on. So, uh... <laughs> so uh, I'm building a house and um, next week I'll get the keys to my house. And um, uh, one of the things I wanted was home automation. I got a blank canvas and I got uh, an opportunity to, um, to integrate everything I want. So there are some requirements. Um, one, of the, one of the things is that I wanted it to be wired. Uh, it's a lot more stable uh, and yeah, new houses, they typically uh, block a lot of radio signals. So I want to have like uh, something that works. Uh, it should also uh, yeah, pass the, the wife acceptance factor. Because yeah, um, yeah, it, it should just work, and not that I get a call of like, hey, the light switch is not working. So I wanted to have something stable. Uh, and also, one very important thing is, whenever I want to sell the house, it should also work. It should be transferable, and not something that is a hype right now, but maybe not supported in the next five years. It, sh it should just work over ten years. Um, so yeah, that's why I chose KNX. Uh, KNX is already around for uh, quite some time. It's, uh, it's supported by a lot of manufacturers. Um, so yeah, so just to give an idea of what it was currently in my house, uh, you see a lot of, uh, of additional tubes uh, for which I uh, they will end up in my utility closet where I can switch lights and so on. And all the green ones, maybe not that clear of a picture, they are actually from KNX uh, wire. They were integrated by the by the house builder uh, you know, some time ago. So. It's already in place. Uh, KNX, like I said, is already a few years old. Um, I think the first version, which was called the European Installation Bus, was uh, yeah, somewhere from the 1990s. Uh, initially, twisted pair, but they currently also have radio frequency implementation, which is not quite uh, used quite a, uh, quite a lot. And they even have an IP version. I will not go into the IP version uh, over here. Uh, I will just use the twisted pair version. And one of the major uh, you know, benefits of using uh, KNX is that it's decentral. So if I uh, toggle a light switch, it will send a command to, uh, to the light bulb to go on or off. Um, and not having some central uh, system in place, uh, which runs some home automation software that will yeah, do the routing. So whenever some component fails, the whole network should just work. Uh, typical devices, they are like, um, like you see on the picture, you have like the things that you integrate in your uh, wall socket, uh, but you also have the, the more robust versions which go into your uh, utility closet. Um, 
Yeah, so basically all the, the switching goes from there. Uh, okay, in X-Network you can have like uh, uh, different topologies. Uh, you can have like uh, the tree wiring version, you can have like a star wiring version, uh, or maybe do it the neat way and then have a line uh, wiring version. I guess my house is a mix of some of all, all of them. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't put down the cables, they, they were installed, so I think that shows the easy way, and uh, yeah, that's why it's probably a mix of uh, all of them. Um, a system integrator is somebody who will configure the system for your house, and that he or, he or she will use a software called ETS. Um, it's manufactured by the KNX Association. You have to have a license, which costs around 1,000 euros to be able to use it. Um, this is the place where you would configure, like, if I click this switch, this light will go on and uh, have th things like ski uh, scenes and, uh, yeah, uh, if you have, like, temperature stuff, then you can configure your uh, central heating through there. So it's basically something that the system integrator will do for you once, and then it should just work. Uh, of course, I have this license as well, so I can change uh, things uh, uh, when I add new features to my own system. Uh, I will tell a little bit about the KNX protocol. Um, it's, it's an old protocol, so you can see this from the baud rate, it's like 9600 bytes, a bit per second, which is not much. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's old, but it works, and it's stable. Uh, typical uh, telegram length will be up to 23 bytes, but they, uh, they will pack things together to make it uh, very small. So if you have something like a light switch will, will only send one or zero, they will pack it into one of the bytes that were already there. So you have to do some smart things to, uh, yeah, to, to, to unpack that. Um, they also realize that they need some more uh, room in some cases. So they also have like extended data frames and you can compare that to jungle frames from uh, networking. So it's only between two devices and not over uh, routers or uh, yeah, line couples, couplers. Uh, a typical uh, KNX device, um, I will keep it very uh, briefly, they have something like communication objects, and that's like the state of the light uh, switch, uh, the, yeah, if the light, the light is on, the current time or the temperature. They have memory, just, yeah, uh, a memory map, um, and you also have properties. So if you see the, the memory on the uh, on the left, um, it can be configured to, to what you want. There are a few uh, places in memory that are fixed. And um, yeah, for instance, I, I reserved a part for over the wire updates, which I also implemented in my uh, experiment port, because whenever I have installed the things in the wall, I cannot update them that quite easily via a J-Link adapter or so. So I need to have something in place to update the software whenever I have a new version. Um, but the properties, they are something that, is, that was added uh, yeah, in later versions of the, of the protocol. <coughs> and basically they uh, are like, um, well, if you want to know the serial number, you don't need to know the memory location of that property, which you can just query <coughs> for the serial number and it will return that value like the description table of all the, the settings you can do. So they basically map onto the memory and provide easy access without knowing how the device actually has its memory map configured. Uh, KNX has a few uh, system models. Uh, the first two ones are the bus coupling unit uh, one and two. They are kind of old. Um, I went for the system seven approach, uh, which allows you up to uh, per device to have like 255 communication objects. Um, but there is also a newer version uh, which has more features. It can go up to 65k of communication objects. Um, so it needs more memory and so on. But Maybe that's something I will achieve in a later version, but for now, System 7 is, is working quite fine. Um, yeah. Uh, in KNX, you have like physical addresses for each uh, device, each actor or sensor node, and it's just a 16-bit address, uh, which is noted like uh, 331. And you also have uh, group uh, addresses, and the group address is something like uh, yeah, if I toggle this, uh, if I toggle the switch, uh, then some telegram will be uh, broadcasted uh, to a certain group address, and everybody who is subscribed to this group address will get this notification, and you can, uh, yeah, update its state on that. Um, yeah. 
KNX is also OZ based. Yeah, we all know this model, uh, except that it doesn't use layer five and layer six. If you look at the specification, uh, they are very short on that topic. Um, link, lay uh, link layer, the layer one and layer two, they are provided by the transceiver that, uh, that you can use. Um, there are a few ones available on the market, so they, uh, they do some work for you, like uh, link layer acknowledgement. So you just basically set the address and then it will keep uh, do the acknowledgements uh, on its own, and you will only get the packet of the datagrams that uh, that you're interested in in, uh, uh, in the upper layers. I'm not the first one to do an implementation, uh, or more specific, an open source implementation. There are a few other ones around. Uh, Cardino is one of the KNX versions that um, yeah is, is based in you know, on the Arduino platform. But they're very limited. They only can do this, uh, listen to the to the group objects change, changing. So uh, what I did is I can also configure it from the, the software screenshot I show, shown, and most of them over here, they cannot do that. Uh, I think Selfbus can do that, but it's a couple to uh, specific ARM platforms. And um, yeah, that makes it hard to make it uh, more generic for Riot. So I uh, thought, well, Let's try it and see if I can make something uh, on my own. Uh, what I think that my stack offers above the other ones is that it's, uh, you can use it on any hardware device that has enough ROM and uh, RAM. It's more complete in, 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 in the, the, the number of features supported. Um, most, all, most, uh, most of the stacks I've shown you, they also have uh, support for only the older versions. And my one uh, can do the emulation of System 7, which is also old, but works better. And um, yeah, it should be more license friendly because some of the other ones are GPL, so we could not eventually merge it with Riot anyway. So yeah, I need to find something else. Uh, I will show you a screenshot of the architecture that I've used, um, but I never did something with GNRC before, and uh, I also don't have any experience with IPv6 or Stix low band or wireless communication. So yeah, I, that's basically what Riot is, is about. But I'm more of the uh, yeah, the older stuff then. Um, so, what I did is maybe not the best way, but it works. And um, just to give you an idea, I'm, I'm, I, won't, I won't show you any source code because um, it's really too boring. Um, but uh, yeah, what you can see over here is this, these are the device drivers. And the device drivers, they uh, uh, for the hardware transceivers. I chose to make them like uh, that you can operate them like standalone, so it's not tied to NetDev or. Uh, yeah, you can just use it uh, from a test application. Uh, then I provided the, the net interface for KNX, just like for Ethernet and for, uh, for the others. Um, that will feed packets into uh, the layer three. Um, they don't have any fancy names like TCP or IP or whatsoever, so it's just called layer three, layer four, layer uh, seven in this case. <laughs> I couldn't find a better name uh, in any of the specs. It's just KNX. Um, Eventually, you'll have to define your own device. And when you define your own device, you basically say, OK, these are the communication objects I have. This is my memory map. Um, and when you do that, uh, you also need to have like a product specification for the software part I show you. And then they, these two can communicate. So when I, I in the software change like a setting, it will change something in the RAM. The RAM will be uploaded to my uh, device that will be stored in Flash or on a uh, Flash chip. And then, uh, yeah, you can just use it in uh, uh, with Riot. Riot. On the lower, uh, you see some additional libraries that are made to work with the telegrams that uh, that will be passed around. Um, so they can also use be used uh, standalone. So, for instance, if you want to have the source address of the telegram, well, you just use the library to do the things. And over here, you have the KNX device library, uh, which will contain all the things like memory uh, properties, uh, communication objects, and uh, things to work with that. Um, yeah, I wanted to make it work without uh, NetDev, so you can just use the device drivers as is. Um, and the, the KNX library, the, so the bottom part, they are not tied to uh, GNRC. Uh, you can also use them standalone. Um, my source code is available. Um, just want to point out that it's uh, very unstable and will change the change very often. Uh, you can find it over here. Uh, it also contains some uh, device specific stuff. So you, uh, you can, um, 
there, there will be some commits that, that maybe are not applicable to your board or your use case and now but they are applicable, applicable to my board and the things that I want to uh, integrate in my board. <laughs> Um, if you want to start on your own and want to test this out, um, yeah, you need something more than just a microcontroller. You uh, you need a, a microcontroller which can uh, can do uh, eight bits, uh, even parity, and one stop bit, uh, which is not supported by Riot uh, by default. Um, I think there was a pull request in the past to add support for UR codes, uh, but um, it got lost somewhere or at least not merged. Uh, I know that there is support for the Kinetis boards and also the EFM32 have an additional feature flag which you can toggle to configure these uh, settings. You'll also need a, um, a transceiver and the cheapest way to get one uh, uh, working is, um, is using this module. So um, it, it, it's like, like something you would put in the wall and then you can, uh, and they have like uh, switches which you can put on top on the wall so you can easily May, uh, yeah, configure your uh, sensors and switches and so on. But it's also a fine uh, module which contains the transceiver uh, to get started. Uh, apart from that, you also need the uh, power supply unit and uh, an IP router to, uh, yeah, and the, and the software to, to program it. Uh, the software is uh, available for free up to five actors, and that's not a much that that's not much if you build a house like uh, like me. Uh, you can get like a basic license for 200 euro, euros, which allow you to use up to uh, 20 actors, and an actor is just one device. Uh, or if you pay the full price, uh, you'll pay uh, you you get unlimited uh, uh, support, or you can use unlimited number of actors. And uh, I think in my house I will probably have around 30 or 40, so just to give an idea. Now I also created a custom board. Uh, which runs my software, and um, yeah, just to give you an idea of what it is, it's a very clear picture, of course. Um, this is the KNX chip, the transceiver. This is the EFM chip. Uh, you'll connect it to, to here, and then some interface connectors on the board. To give you an idea of its size, well, it's, it's packed, but it's like this. Um, it's quite. Uh, Big in terms of memory, so um, yeah, my code is not optimized for memory size yet. It's just uh, I have a lot of a lot available, so I bother that uh, optimizing. Um, that's the, the Cortex M4 uh, processor. Um, it also has a flash chip for storing configuration data. Um, here's another picture to compare it with a with a uh, commercial alternative. Uh, my board is even smaller, so it would fit better in wall sockets. Um, and to give you an idea of how I would use it. Um, this is a switch which you would have on the wall. Um, I also made some uh, the option to have an uh, I2C C connector, and then I can do things like having temperature sensors in the switch, switch connected to my board and have like temperature, humidity, and so on per uh, room um, with the same hardware. And this is just another picture of how I uh, would hook it up. Uh, the interface connectors on the top they would go to the switch itself and then, then just get the uh, yeah, GPIO stuff. And the uh, I2C connector is over here. It would go through the switch um, to the sensors in front of the, uh, the, the switch. Uh, to give you an idea of the price, it's around 24 euros, uh, depending on the number of switches you, of devices you make. Um, I think it's quite neat because commercial alternative um, they start around 60 euros, so uh, it's actually cheaper. Mm -hmm. So my girlfriend was uh, yeah, more uh, amused. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm also planning to, to use this board as a generic gateway. For instance, I want to, uh, to connect to energy meters in my house. So uh, I also want to uh, have uh, connected to the solar system to, to, to read that out. And I can easily configure my application to work with that because all the lower layers all are already in place. So what's next? Um, yeah, what works is the hardware works. Uh, device drivers are there. I also created a lot of unit tests uh, yeah, to test things out. It's kind of documented, at least it has documentation. I'm not saying that it's comprehensive, but it's, it's there. Um, and you can program it with, with the, uh, the ETS uh, software. Um, 
I also have a small video of my first success. Well, it's just like a Hello World application. What you see over here is the switch, which is connected to a commercial alternative, and it will send things to my own board, which you see somewhere over here. Uh, but you'll see some LEDs light up. And I think that the, the, I also measured the, uh, the delay between toggling the switch and the LEDs, and it's around 68 milliseconds. Um, and I think a lot of wireless uh, alternatives, they don't achieve that. Um, and you want to have the feeling that some of the things are working and you don't have to flick the switch a few times before it's actually working. Yeah. Uh, this is another example where I just connected a, uh, a display to the board because it has uh, I squared C. And then I uh, subscribe to time updates, and then it will get the time updates. Uh, there's uh, some things uh, to finish. Um, it needs to be reviewed. Um, then I need to split it up, because currently it's like 28 commits, of which like 18 are useful. The other ones are on my own board, uh, and some missing features. I need to split it up in a, for like the device driver part, the, the networking part, and the application part. And eventually, I also need to have uh, over the wire updates uh, working. It's also already included, uh, but I have some problems with uh, with making it uh, work reliable. So uh, there's a need to finish that as well and use the uh, the OTA part that is going to be contributed hopefully soon. Uh, and also, I need to make a, a few more boards before next week, because then I'll get the keys and start uh, fixing my house. Um, the layer 7 part is currently very coupled between the devi yeah, your device description and, and uh, handling the, 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 the application part. And I want to make that, uh, yeah, split that part. Um, because currently you, you have to have support for programming it via the software, but if you don't want to, yeah, you're out of luck at, at this point. Uh, and like I said, the memory is currently using, uh, it's, it's using a lot of memory, and I want to uh, optimize that at some time. Uh, but yeah, that's for the future. Um, well, this was my presentation. Um, if there are any questions, feel free to ask. I'm also at the lunch, and you can also check out the board if you want. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, I think it was a very uh, interesting uh, example what you can do with this way in the new world. <laughs> um, are there any questions? Or are we postponing questions completely to lunch? But we will have the, the, the last talk of the session uh, now and postponing lunch uh, a little bit anyway. So there's room for uh, questions. Too. Like to ask something now. Yeah, Preston, thanks for this impressive uh, uh, implementation and impressive work. Um, the, uh, the way you see OTA fit in there, that you would be able to uh, update the KNX stack itself, right? Yes. Okay, so that's, that's why you were talking about this. System seven becomes system B later on. Right? For instance, that's because um, when I put them in the wall, they will be enclosed in, uh, and I cannot access them anymore. So I, yeah, I took the, the existing uh, OVR update pull request and uh, uh, cut away all those OAPs, so, and then uh, uh, it made it work for, uh, yeah, for my purpose. Um, second question, a uh, uh, little bit. Um, uh, you put the price up uh, for like the hardware mm -hmm. like for the license like can, can you give a, you know ballpark figure like what you pay uh well for the um so this, this is only to make one board uh you don't have to pay uh, for the license uh, only if you want to use the software to configure it and uh, it's 200 euros for like uh, up to 20 devices and uh, thousand euros for limited devices, but there are some uh, open source alternatives to have like a different way of programming the devices that still work with the rest of the KNX actors. Um, it's, it's called connecting, but yeah, I want to have something that from working from one place and it's not really supported. So um, yeah, 
I just make it work for my own device, and then I hope it will work in the near future. But if it doesn't work in the near future, then I can also implement some other ways to program it. Okay, I would um, propose to take the rest of the discussion to lunch. And That's let's fine. go over to the next one now. Thanks again. Thank you.